Today, I'm flying business class on the Dutch flag carrier, KLM. I'll be trying out their brand new 78710, which features a scarcely seen new business class. I'll be providing you with a brutally honest review of the entire experience of what it's really like on the Flying Dutchman. From the dining, sleeping arrangements, and even a never before seen insight into the secret upstairs of the Dreamliner. And down to the frankly obscene costs charged for this flight, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. With that, let's cut the waffle, um, yeah, and head to the airport. You join me today at Toronto International Airport. This has been a long time coming, but also it's been very close to not happening due to the late arrival of the plane I have just been on. And we're going to head over to the Dreamliner now that's going to take us over to the Netherlands. Let's see if the Air France lounge it's open um how does this work i'm guessing 80. right so we have the plaza premium which is closed there we have the plaza premium lounge which is open and then thankfully we have the klm air france lounge open here hey there i'm good how you doing uh yep then one I know, I've literally just arrived off another flight. I, it's been that close. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Flight KL 692, with service to Amsterdam, is going for Right, so you'll have to excuse my haste, of course, because I do have to go and catch this flight. But you can see what I've just got off here, the 7879 that's flown over from Calgary with me on. And I've been very lucky to find that if I had not got my ticket beforehand, I've been in a situation now where I'd be missing this flight. Anyway, let's see what this lounge has to offer. This is an official Sky Team lounge. Can I get a, just a water, please? Thank you. I'm living the dream with the water. That's literally just because of the timings. So as you can see, there is a relative amount of space in this lounge. Different seating areas. I think there's some more around here. Yeah, that's the bathrooms. And it's certainly better than the offering that I had the Air France lounge in Chicago a few weeks ago. But anyway, let's go sit down for a couple of minutes before I fly. And then, of course, we have the delights of the 78710 to look forward to. A few moments later. Literally no time to spare whatsoever. Let's head straight down to the jet. I've only flown on one of them before, and that would have been the BA one. They're quite a big aircraft, and they're a lot bigger than the, uh, the 7878, and indeed the 9 as well. So to explain to you guys how mad this is, this is the flight I've just got off this WestJet flight here. And this here is the flight that I'm on. And I believe that business class was relatively light when I looked earlier today. Whether there's been more upgrades or not, I do not know. But let's see. Can I have you Have a nice Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And just before we get on board, here's a quick word from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace make it super easy for you to set up and host a website. And no, you don't have to know complicated coding. Squarespace really have this down, handling it all from your domain name through to the design, hosting, social media linking, and even your search engine optimization. The best bit is Squarespace offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just head over to squarespace.com forward slash track trendy and use the coupon code track trendy. Thanks again Squarespace for making this video possible. Hello. Welcome on board KLM's gorgeous 78710. Well I'll tell you one thing guys, I'm of course getting this coat off. Goodness me. Let's stow my bags and get settled into my seat, six kilo. Well guys, I'm relieved to say that I've made it safely on board. Goodness me, that was perhaps the closest I've ever pushed it. Um, I also apologize, I'm a little bit overheated. So as always, I will do a full seat tour. We'll have a look what's for dinner tonight. Of course, we'll get the, the bed made up and everything you can usually expect from me on the channel. Waiting on my seat, I've got the amenity kit, hand sanitizing gel, some snacks, 
and some menus that we'll crack into when we get airborne. It's not long before the crew begin to prepare the cabin for departure, so it's time to get my seatbelt on. KLM uses a shoulder strap seatbelt, similar to most modern products, unlike Air France's dated 777 and the uncomfortable lap belt along with an airbag. Talking of AF, as we start to taxi out, you can see their modern and competitive Airbus A350, and this features their gorgeous new business class, which I'm yet to try. As we continue our taxi, the safety video is run. I like the creativity with this. It's almost like each scene is a tile. I love it. For someone that sees more airline safety videos than most, I really do appreciate it when they go the extra mile to make it a tad more interesting. With that, we continue our taxi out to the runway and take off into the freezing Canadian night sky. Tonight's flight will be taking us nearly 6,000 kilometers, all the way over to Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Flight time should be around seven hours, which should give me plenty of time to experience all the quirks and features of this aircraft today. It's not long before we reach altitude. First up, let's check out what's on the menu for tonight. The menu is solid, with multiple options for all courses. The yellowfin tuna and braised beef are standouts for me here. I'm told food shouldn't be too long, so in the meantime, let's take a look around the seat. The Dreamliners are unique in KLM's fleet, being that they offer a pretty competitive product, the best of course being this 78710. Unfortunately, the backbone of their fleet, the 777, has a dated 222. I'd suggest avoiding this if you can, but do bear in mind last minute equipment swaps always seem to happen. As a solo passenger, I'd suggest booking a window seat, and all aside from row five, offer great views. Here's what the middle seats look like. They're ideal if you want to sit next to your partner or friend. There's even a divider, which you can slide across should you not want to speak to them. So the seat itself is comfortable and you can't help but miss the crystal clear HD screen right in front of you. Now for the counter to your right. This features the seat controls, needing to turn this into a bed along with the seating adjustments. I am however disappointed to find quite a few chips and scratches on this otherwise brand new seat. It does not appear to be wearing well. Just behind the counter you have further stowage space along with a reading light and your IFE controls. Overall, the seat is a great one, and it even passed my cubby test, something which both Turkish and Air Europa didn't. We will of course turn this into a bed in just a moment, but for now, let's crack on with the food. KLM, like many, are not quite Qatar-esque, and whilst they serve on a tablecloth, the rest of your food is presented on a tray. Don't you just love the metal cutlery that KLM use, with the ornate patterns? I start with the yellowfin tuna. It's absolutely delicious, and brought me back to my a and flights last summer to Japan. Well, so far so good. And provided with a selection of bread, which is thankfully fresh and not like a rock, as is sometimes the case. My main of braised beef arrives. I can't say it looks the best, albeit I love the dish that it's in, but it tasted fantastic. The beef was tender and flavorful. For dessert, I opted for the chocolate petit fours. This was sweet but tasty and not too dissimilar to Air France's offering. Funny that, given that they're pretty much the same company. To close, I'm offered tea and coffee, but given I want to try and get some sleep, I just go for a couple of the accompanying chocolate houses. Interestingly though, they were Belgium rather than Dutch. Next, a rare treat. The crew kindly offered to show me an area of the plane many have not seen, nor knew existed. And what is it, you ask? The upstairs crew rest area, both at the front and back of the aircraft. First up is the pilot rest area, at the front of the business class cabin, with a reclining seat. I feel sorry for whoever pulls that short straw. And of course, there's two beds with privacy curtains. There is, however, as I alluded to, a much larger one at the back of the plane. Let's go there now. Equally as steep to get up to, though much better lit, is the main crew rest area, with a total of six single beds. Each seem to have a reading light, charging point, and privacy curtain. Whilst I can't imagine it's the comfiest of sleeps between shifts, it's certainly better than a blocked economy seat, which is what some airlines have for their crew on such flights. Right, let's head back to my seat. En route, however, I feel it's fitting to do a quick loo review. There are two loos at the front of the business class cabin, and they were clean throughout the flight. Whilst not the roomiest, they're fine for a red eye. Don't you just love the little houses on the wall? When washing my hands, however, I discovered that whilst there's soap, neither of the moisturizers had anything in them, and this was the same in the other bathroom as well. Okay, let's head over to my seat and make it up into a bed. At first, I had a few issues with this, as the seat didn't seem to budge. After jiggling the seat a bit, suddenly the controls were responsive and I was able to adjust the seat accordingly into the lay flat position. There's only a blanket and pillow provided today, but as the flight was quite light, I was able to take the bedding from the seat behind me. 
Overall, a solid bed and with a roomy cubby, it's among the comfiest business class seats I've had the pleasure of sleeping in across the Atlantic. I slept for about three hours, as I'd set an alarm intentionally to not miss breakfast service. I am reviewing the entire experience after all. I'm surprised I'm even able to retract the tray table, with the bed still partly down, which creates a kind of breakfast in bed vibe. Right, what do we have on offer this morning? Well, there isn't really the selection like with dinner. However, I was offered an off menu special, the French toast. This was divine and just what I needed along with a cup of coffee to wake me up. These red eyes are never good for sleep, whatever class you're in. I chose not to eat the salmon as I wasn't really feeling it this morning, but if the tuna last night was anything to go by, I'm sure it was delicious. I finish off with the bircher muesli and yogurt which went down brilliantly. And after a good swig of apple juice, I begin to get ready for landing. Just as I thought the surprises were all over though, I was offered this super cute house filled with gin as a departing gift. What a lovely touch KLM. With that, we begin our descent into Amsterdam, and I have to say, going into this flight, I wasn't really sure what to expect, given I've never flown KLM long haul. But I was really impressed. The service by the crew was phenomenal and very personable. Whilst the bedding wasn't brilliant, the bed itself was comfortable enough with plenty of room to spread out. I'd certainly recommend KLM for a solid business class experience. Just make sure you use Flying Blue Miles rather than deal with that hideous cash cost on routes such as this. Right guys, so welcome to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Goodness me, what a wonderful flight on KLM. I really, really enjoyed the new Dreamliner and their new business class is fantastic and really, really worth a try if you haven't done so already. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll catch you guys all again next week. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash trendy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.